Today we're going to take a look at the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522 Sport. South Carolina Gun School is more than just a gun school. With over a dozen classes including pistol, rifle, shotgun, concealed carry, and vehicle tactics, you're guaranteed to find something for you. If you're anywhere near Greenville, South Carolina, check them out at scgunschool.com. I bought this gun in June or July of 2018, and I've hardly shot it until this year, 2020. There are a few different I'll ways to the buy this gun. Why a the little later in this video, but let's go over right. a few you can usually that you pick know that up for the gun. low 300s. As of right now, Palmetto State Armory has it for $299.99, and I'll put a link to that in the description and comments below. You can also buy it upgraded with Magpul furniture, like you see here, and they also have a California compliant version, and they even sell a performance center version that has a match grade barrel and a few other upgrades. So you can look around and decide which one is right for you. I bought the cheapest one, and that's what we're going to be going over today. Now this gun, they come with a 25 round magazine from the factory unless you buy a California compliant model. And you can buy these in black or flat dark earth. To the best of my knowledge, there is no aftermarket magazine for this gun. So you only have the option of buying the factory original ones. But they run well and I have no issues with the magazines. This gun is almost completely polymer. The upper, lower, and handguard are all plastic, with the exception of a few things that you would typically find in a lower parts kit, like the magazine catch, bolt catch, and a few other parts like that. It breaks down just like a regular AR. You have the two pins here, and they're really easy to push through, and then you can pull them out from the other side. Once you pull that back one out, you can break the upper and the lower. I'll just do it off camera because it's easier. So you can break those apart, and then you can easily pull this pin out here, and the two pieces just separate. So you got the lower, and I'll let you look in there just for a second if you kind of want to see how it looks. It's hard to see with this lighting. But um, you got the upper here, charging handle, bolt carrier group. I'll take those out so you can see. This bolt carrier group is largely plastic. All of this black here is plastic on it. You got this metal front part here, but uh, half of the bolt carrier group is plastic because it doesn't need to all be metal in this 22 LR format. So let's go back to the lower and specifically take a look at the buffer tube. If you look in there, you can see that there is no buffer tube because you don't need one in this 22 LR format. So the buffer tube is permanently molded, the faux buffer tube, I should say. It's permanently molded and attached to the lower receiver. It's all part and parcel with each other. So it's not something that you can swap out if you wanted to do that. So just keep that in mind that the buffer tube is not really swappable. Now if you take a look at the included stock, it's one of the cheapest stocks that you can actually throw on a gun. In fact, I recently bought a Crossman Bushmaster MPW Full Auto BB gun, there it is, just for the fun of it. And I decided to swap out the stock that came with it, and I put this Trinity uh, Forest stock that I bought for 8 bucks, which is actually pretty good, and I put that on there. And the stock that originally came with the BB gun was this one. Notice anything? It's the exact same stock from the MP1522, with the exception of some uh, serrations or some some texture right there, and the 22 has the, the slain mount on it. But otherwise, it's the exact same stock. And let's face it though, you don't really need a great stock on a 22 rifle. You're not getting a whole bunch of recoil. So even though it's cheap, the included stock is adequate for what you need, and it is a six position stock. So just keep that in mind, you're not getting some kind of great stock on this gun. Now back to the reason that I hardly shot this gun in 2018 and 2019. When I first took it to the range, I hated it. There's a very common issue with the extractor. If you look it up, you'll see a ton of complaints about it. There was also a recall on guns manufactured prior to early 2019, but that recall related to the bolt, and my issue was with the extractor. This gun would constantly jam. I was getting stovepipes every few rounds. I couldn't get through a 25 round mag without having anywhere from 5 to 8 stovepipes. This is the only video I ever took of it, but you can see what was happening there. I tried what I could to fix the issue and shot this gun three times in a year and a half, but without success. 
I contacted Smith & Wesson using their online form, but never heard back from them. I contacted them again online, and again couldn't get any sort of response. Then I called them, and they sent a shipping label, I sent it into them, and within a couple weeks I had it back with a new extractor put in. I love this gun now. It runs like a dream, and I haven't had any issues since I got it back from Smith & Wesson. So there you have it, seven things to know. Oh, and it is last round bolt hold open for what it's worth. So to recap, you got different models, price, I went over the magazines, polymer body, took a look at the guts of the gun, the faux buffer tube, cheap stock, extractor issue, Smith & Wesson customer service, tons of fun, runs like a dream, LRBHO. I think that's it. Guys, thanks for watching. Please hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Take care, God bless, I'll see you next time.